just like Zacharias, and I didn't want that to happen. I didn't want to go, how shall these things be? You know, seeing, no, no, no. I, I was very aware, I, honestly, I was, I was a little afraid, but I'm like, maybe he can give me something else. Can you give me a little bit, a little bit more? I said, how, how am I gonna do this? I haven't accomplished what I've already been sent to do, and now the Lord has given me this, I'm honored. But how do I do this? And this is, again, he's speaking to how low I felt. I felt broken. I felt like I was a failure. I felt like I hadn't gotten anything done. I'd been crying for a year. And he said, you are an alpha man. And he said, and God's going to use alpha men to reach the alpha cities. My perception of myself was not. So the angel leaves and my wife and I start talking after I'm telling her what just happened to me. And I waited a little bit. I was still hesitant. And I said, do, do, you, do you think I'm an, I'm an alpha male? You hold my life in your hands right now. <laughs> she just looks at me. She goes, I can't even believe you're asking me that. She just laughs and walks away. I was like, Phew, thank you, God. Okay, confirmation from the Lord and from my wife, so I'm, I'm, I'm okay. I'm saying this and being very vulnerable in saying this because so many times what we feel in the spirit and how we actually live are two different things. And God is wanting to bring our present reality of how we function day to day to what happens when we step up in the spirit. Now, Brother Lane was talking about when the gift of faith comes, like, you know, he'll drop a person off of a wheelchair, just leave him on the floor. He doesn't care. <laughs> In other words, there's no apprehension at all. You just go. You just do. You just step out. This is what Elijah did for that whole day. And then the anointing kind of lifts, and now he's under the tree praying to die. That humanity. So what God is wanting to do is he is wanting to, he is wanting to give us confidence. Everyone say confidence. So faith says God can do anything. Confidence says God can do anything through me. He'll do it for me. One of my favorite stories, and I know it's, it's very comical, but I just have to tell it since we're kind of in a morning flow. So Brother Stonking was going to all these trips to Israel, and of course these single women would think, that on this trip, this will be the time when he will discover that I'm the one. And so I was on the trip with him, and I was with Raymond Woodward, and I were there, and Brother Woodward had already been on several trips with him, and he knew the routine, and there's certain points where Brother Stonking just needs a break, and he lets the tour guide speak, and he just kinda steps back, and he just kinda wanders down the path by himself, and takes a breath, because he's with the people all the day and all night, and he just needs about five minutes to reset himself. Well, one of those women saw her moment. And he just turned right back around and went right back to the, let's go back and join the tour, you know? Oh, Brother Woodward whipped out his camera and went, Ch -ch -ch. and he goes to Brother Stone King and he says, I got your picture today. And he goes, oh, you did not. He goes, I did. He goes, I'm going to ask Jesus that that picture does not turn out. <laughs> you know he did. Brother Woodward developed his film. This was before digital pictures. He goes and develops his film. I kid you not, every picture in the roll came out perfect <laughs> except one. He goes, I told you, Jesus does things for me, boy. He does things for me. <laughs> what I'm saying to you today is I want you to get that same kind of confidence that God will do things for you. <laughs> that he loves you. He cares about the things you care about. Turn to somebody and say, he does things for me. 
It's what he was doing with Gideon. You're a mighty man of valor. I don't feel like a mighty man of valor. But just because that's the way you feel, it's not the way it really is. I want you to know who you really are, and so I'm coming to tell you. Hallelujah. 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 So all through the 2010 to 2019, I'm still walking around praying for Alpha Cities and believing for Alpha Cities. And I'm feeling like a failure again because I'm getting to 2019. I said, God, I know you can do a quick work, but I thought you said in the next decade. And he said, son, I said in the next decade, not this decade. I gave you a decade to get ready. It's going to happen in 2020 decade. Wow. And then what happens when we come into 2020? The whole world shuts down with COVID. And you can see how fast things can change. And we went from not being able to reach very many people to the whole world is living their life out through their iPhones and their computers. And God says, start a daily broadcast to counteract the daily corona updates, coronavirus updates. And he said, I'm gonna squeeze you and you're gonna do a bunch of stuff you weren't planning on doing. <laughs> I said, God, you want me to do a prayer broadcast? I said, I, I don't pray as good as I want to pray. He said, teach them what I've taught you. Teach them the patterns of prayer. And people will come alongside of you, and they'll pray with you. And he said, that's all I require. I said, okay. And I went from just reaching a handful of people to people all over the world that were tuning in. And I was having some 250,000 views of some of my broadcasts during Corona. Wow. Just amazing. And God accelerated the reach of the church. And I was just one of probably thousands of pastors and prayer partners and people around the world that were doing similar things. And God was saying, this is how fast I can reach the nations. This is how fast. I know we're, we were talking about a pandemic and we were all shut down. God was saying, no, I'm, I'm accelerating my kingdom right now. I'm mobilizing my people. I'm getting you out from being a daily, to being a weekly church to being a daily church. I'm getting you on your face and realizing that the church is not a building, that the church is people. I'm trying to empower you that you can know that you can have church in your living room that you can have I want you to know who you are and there was about 30% of the church that disappeared about 30% of the church has disappeared and it was a shock that some people that you thought would never have left, left. And some of the people that you wouldn't think that would really grow roots suddenly came up and they started doing awesome it was absolutely amazing. Now, now during our time, God, God did so many cool things during our time. Our money didn't go down. Our money went up. We actually renovated the whole church because nobody was in there. We ripped out all the pews. We put in new carpet, put in chairs, put in screens. People were saying, hey, hey, uh, we need better cameras. I'm like, yeah, we need better cameras. They're like, how much do they cost? And then we started bringing people in. And it was so cool because we got all these amazing cameras for so cheap. I was like, I remember when we used to price them out 10 years ago, it was so expensive, and now we're getting these like black magic cameras for like $5,000, $10,000. I was like, wow, these used to be $100,000. Yeah. And God is saying, I'm gonna give you the resources, I'm gonna give you the people, you just gotta get in the stream of it. You just gotta get in the flow of it, and you have to operate in a different mindset. You've gotta stand up to the fear. So we did a, we did a spread hope, not fear campaign. We had everybody put it on their cars and, and drive around the city with spread hope and not fear. We went downtown Houston. There was nobody there. There was a cop standing on the street. What are you doing? I said, we're spreading hope because everybody's afraid. He goes, keep on doing that, brother. Keep on doing that. I, that's just, we need more hope around here. We started doing prayer walks. We started walking around schools. We had drives. We had prayer drives where people would just come under, come under the canopy of the church and they'd just come by. And my wife and I, they roll down the windows. How you doing? How's everybody? In the name of Jesus. And we're just praying through the windows and people are coming and, and being blessed. The lines all around, all around the block of cars coming in just to have prayer. God was trying to mobilize us. But now here we are coming into the Jewish year, 5785. And this is a historic time right now. Even more significant than what happened in 2020 is what's happening right now in the Gregorian year 2024. I didn't realize this until 2017 that I was operating on a different calendar spiritually. I didn't realize it until somebody brought it to my mind and helped me to understand the Jewish calendar and how it plays out. I would feel something shift about every October. 
And I would start telling people about what we're going to do next year. And I'm feeling all this stuff for next year, next year, next year. And they were going, well, we're still in October. We still got a couple months left. I said, I know, but something just changed. I, I can't understand it. And I didn't realize that God was syncing me up with his calendar rather than the Gregorian calendar because this is Yom Teruah and then Yom Kippur and then Feast of Tabernacles, Sukkot. It is the civic new year on God's calendar. And everything resets. Hallelujah. But the significance of where we are right now, the 70th 50-year jubilee, the 70th jubilee, wow, just happened a couple weeks ago. They blew trumpets. They celebrated. It is the year. It's the old, the old Messianic praise song. It is the year of Jubilee when the blind shall walk and the blind shall see. I'm sorry, folks. I'm just having fun today. We're going to get there real fast, real fast. We're almost there. When I came into this new year, I have never had the Lord be so specific. I, I knew that this was a very significant year because God was so specific. Hallelujah. I want you to stop and lift your hands to the Lord right now. Lift your hands. I'm trying to give you a foundation for where we're about to go. worship for a few minutes right now. Something's coming in this place right now. God's about to open your, your, your heart. He's going to, about to open your spirit into another flow. It's Jubilee time. The global system has a reset, but we have a great awakening. They have their antichrist system. We have the kingdom. In Jubilee, what happens? You spend a year putting things back the way they're supposed to be. There's so much abundance. He said, you just leave the fields. You don't have to plow them. In Jubilee, you can just eat all you want because I'll just let it grow of itself. You don't have to till the ground. All of your indentured servants, their contracts are over. Their debts are canceled. They go back and, and go back to their generational inheritance. There are no people that oppress another in a jubilee. Everyone is back to the same status. Everything is reset. There's no debt. And the lands are restored. Now when Jesus started his ministry, he quoted Isaiah 61, and then he closed the book and sat down and said, this day, this day are these words fulfilled in your ears. Where did he stop reading? The day, the acceptable year of the Lord. He was saying, I am establishing a kingdom jubilee. That the messianic reign is here to bring it to pass. Now, folks, we have a double effect right now. That we are operating in what Jesus did and what Jesus does and what he will do. We are operating in the ministry of Christ. And that is essentially what he does. Is he takes away the oppressed. He lifts up those who are downcast. He heals the brokenhearted. He pulls you out of your prison. He opens the blinded eyes. And he puts you in his kingdom. And now you who were not a people have a people. You who were, were oppressed are now raised up. That is jubilee. And he said, this is my messianic ministry. But now we also have his calendar year of 70th jubilee. Imagine the compounding prophetic significance of what that means for the church right now. What should we be asking God for right now? 
Pastor Justin, how about all the debt of Life Church canceled this year? How about every pastor get up and confess every bit of debt is removed from our churches? I wonder, if, I wonder if people would get up in their houses and their homes and, and all of their financial woes and say, God, this is Jubilee, and I'm a kingdom son and daughter, and I would like to cancel all the debt right now in Jesus' name so I can be free to do the work of God. Stop and lift your hands to the Lord right now. Just... I just want you to ruminate in the spirit. Let faith just start rising up in you. The oppression, the oppression has got to be broken in Jesus' name. And I, I don't have time to do everything I, it's in my spirit today. I'm going to try to just... Let me go through this. I'll do a few more things quickly. So as we started the year, the Gregorian year, catching up now with the Hebrew year, coming into 2024, the Lord began to talk to me very specifically. He said, there is a vacuum of leadership that is growing in America. And he said, this is by design. He said the global community is wanting to destroy nationalism and trying to destroy America during this year of political uh, transition. And he said they are trying to destroy faith in both parties because until we doubt the, the present political system that we have, they cannot institute their global system. And he said, but while they are trying to destroy our national system, he said, there will be a gap. He said, there will be a vacuum. And he said, the church must step into that vacuum or the Antichrist spirit will be there by default. Twenty million people did not vote in the last election that were evangelicals. Twenty million. That's the difference in the election. Why? They're already disillusioned. Lesser of two evils. This is the idea. This is all we got. It's the best we got. Somebody fell out of a coconut tree and whatever was, we are unburdened by what was that we may something. And now this is the third time Trump. We have Trump for three times. There's nobody else that can capture the imagination of America. And people are disillusioned. And what the Lord said is they would, they would, they would, begin to stop looking to government for answers and they would be looking other places and the church must step into that gap. So what we did is we put a sign in our yard, Jesus 2024, he's our only hope. <laughs> Vote your values, pray, get out there and, and be energized and do that. But but I'm saying there's something bigger that's going on in the spirit that we need to recognize. People are looking for leadership. They want somebody with a plan. They want somebody to tell us what the future is going to be like. Tell us how are we going to survive this. And there's things going on all around the world right now that are putting more and more pressure uh, on, on this generation. This is what the Bible says. In this world, you will have tribulation. The word tribulation has many meanings, but it can also mean in a word picture in the Greek of walls closing in on you. 
This is the impression that we have is that things are just getting tighter and tighter. It's like why people have claustrophobia in an elevator. You know, like I don't want to get stuck in this elevator. It's going to get smaller and smaller while I'm in here. This is the feeling that we have. But Jesus said, be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. We need some people that are kingdom people that understand that we have a kingdom that cannot be moved. And that while the world is shaking, yes, I live in America, but I am not just a citizen of the United States. I have a different citizenship. I have a different passport. I have a heavenly passport and I have authority in the kingdom. And we have to start operating like that. God is wanting to raise up leaders. He told me about music. How he was going to have new songwriters and new songs to go with this up, uprising, uh, 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 this new move of, of apostolic ministry. He said, I always bring fresh, fresh music with fresh movements. And he started talking to me about three different types of music that were going to be written in this year. And so I prophesied about that. He told me each quarter of the year what was going to happen. He said, quarter number one. Repentance and alignment. Repentance and alignment. It was amazing how it coincided so exactly, so perfectly. How everything fell in place for that first quarter. The second quarter, he says, I'm restoring the glory and I'm bringing people back to Jesus as the center. He said, this will be a worship music. This will be a worship, uh, a worship move. And I started getting tired as soon as he talked about it. And I was thinking about all those times when we danced and shouted and laid on the floor and we were exhausting ourselves. And I thought, this happens for a whole quarter. We're, we're worshiping like this. I'm, <laughs> I'm sorry, I was just being human. He said, it will not be like you think. He said, it's going to be to the release of burdens. It's going to be an uplifting. He said, it's going to be encouraging. It's going to be the joy of the Lord is your strength. It's going to be like what you know and what you don't know. He said, because the revelation of Jesus is going to get stronger and more personal. And then I saw the angels. And he said, from my presence, I will begin to send forth angels in the third quarter. And there'll be miracles and signs and wonders. And the healing angel would begin to pass through amongst the people. He said, because the corporate faith of the church must go up. He said, I am changing the mindset of the church. He said, they believe that the fivefold ministry can hear my voice. He said, but I want them to know that these signs shall follow them that believe and that every believer can hear my voice. And he said, I will mobilize my people and there will be miracles in the streets. And he said, and you will not need to be afraid of this. He said, because they are mature and I have developed them and I have prepared them, they will know what to do and they will know how to flow. Tell my people that I am going to speak in their ears. And so what have we been hearing? This message, Bishop, about the mobilization and the ministry of the saints and the priesthood of the believers and the kingdom of, of, of priests and kingdom of prophets. This is what God is saying to us. And he said, I'm going to get the attention of the backslider and they're going to begin to come home. And then when miracles and signs and wonders begin to happen, he said, then there's going to be new people that are going to come in from the community and they are also going to be saved. He said, and in the third quarter, I will begin to assemble my army because in the fourth quarter, I will send forth my army and you will begin to take new territory. And October, October, November, December, the last quarter in our general conference, coincided with that launch of the fourth quarter. And so now, folks, this is where we are. You're at passing the mantle and you are getting fresh impartation so that you can leave this place and you can operate in your true calling and your true gifting and you can take new territory for God. 
And the same thing that God did to me is the same thing that God is going to do to you. You're going to stop saying, I don't know if I can do it, Lord. And you're going to say, God, I don't know why I feel so strong today, but I'm just going to walk in it. I'm just going to flow in it today. God, I'm going to attempt things that I've never attempted. I'm going to pray prayers that, I, that I've never prayed. I, I'm going to do things that I've never done before because this is my time and this is our hour and this is the season. Would you clap your hands to the Lord and give him praise right now? <laughs> Hallelujah! Hallelujah. Mm. Man, I just... Does anybody feel a witness of what I'm talking about right now? Anybody feel a witness? I'm just feeling after the spirit of where he wants me to close this right now. Let's go with this. So we have our missions month now at Church Toronto. This is our first year we did missions month instead of just a missions conference. We have done these global prayer meetings, I don't know, for four years, I think now. And we go from six until 12, and then we go online from seven, it's supposed to be seven to nine, it never ends at nine. But anyway, it went till 10 again this time. And I told everyone to pray less time, and it doesn't matter, the Holy Spirit just moves. So we have three hours online, and then phew, cameras go off, and then we pray till midnight. And as soon as the cameras went off, I started, I started walking through the prophetic words that we had just received. Flo Shaw was with us on the Sunday before our global prayer meeting. And I wanted her to come and tell all these stories about how they shut down uh, the tunnel and prayed about CERN and all the stuff that they've done around the world. I wanted her to do that. And she had her pictures up, but she stopped right in the mid and went, Shoo! and started prophesying over Houston and prophesying over our church and prophesying over Kimberly and I and bringing us up to the front. And, and then she was, it was so loud. People were praying so loud. She was yelling in the mic. I stopped praying. I'm like, I started listening. I, I got to listen real quick. We went back and, 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 and re-listened to everything that she said in the microphone. God gave her very specific confirming words for us. And one of the things that she, she prophesied, one thing she told us is that she had seen this vision years ago of T.W. Barnes in the Garden of Eden. And he was huge. He was like a giant. And he reached into the soil and he pulled out America. It was a country. It was America. And then he reached into the soil again and it was, and it was Israel. And then she saw a third time he reached in and it was another nation. She didn't know what it was, but he only did it three times. And he stopped. And she said they were praying for the service with one of her prayer warriors on, on the Friday before she came in to speak. So this would have been one week before the prayer meeting that we have online. And she said they had finished praying and she all of a sudden went into a vision. And this time it was the Garden of Eden again, but it wasn't Brother Barnes, it was me. And she said, you were tall, like this really tall giant again. And I saw you put your hand in, and you pulled out America. And then you put your hand in, and you pulled out Israel. And then she said, you just kept putting your hand in, and more countries, nation after nation after nation after nation. And then she just screamed like Flo Shaw does, God has given you the nations. She just started screaming. And I was like, my God. another confirmation of what he's doing right now. How we're going to see this great outpouring of the Spirit in these last days. And we're going to see the Alpha Cities reached in Jesus' name. It's going to happen. But it's going to start. It's going to start in your city and in my city. I want you to stop again and lift your hands to the Lord. Put your hands to the Lord just for a minute right now. I'm going somewhere, but I just want you to worship for a minute. Ila makaya la masataka. I'm trying to lay a, a foundation for you. So back to the New Year's Eve. I'm praying, and the Lord takes me up, and he shows me, Brother Lane, he shows me layers of authority in the earth. And they were like, almost like, like a buildings, like parking garages, where you could see the cement foundation, and there were people under, and then... There was another level, and then there would be another ceiling like that, and it was seven levels. One, two, 
three, four, five, six. And in each of these levels, almost all the chairs were full, that they were very congested areas. First one, second one, third one. As we went a little higher, I started seeing a few empty chairs, but there were still lots of people there. And all of a sudden we came to the top that had no ceiling and it was the international stage. And there were empty chairs. There was nobody there. And the Lord said, I want you to pray for international prophets and apostles to be raised up. I want you to pray for this. I was standing up there by myself. He said, you cannot be up here by yourself. You cannot see this by yourself. And I started praying for this. And I realized how many people were not even concerning themselves with this. We're not even thinking about praying for more than just their little region. And he was showing me all these circles of authority, but there's so much more that he wants to do. But here's the awesome part, Bishop. As we begin to pray in that prayer meeting, God showed me that same stage again, and I saw people emerging. I saw whole, whole uh, intercessor groups that were up on that international stage again. And this year, God has begun to elevate not just apostles, and prophets. He said the same amount of chairs exist. He said, but there's a lot more room on this level for people to operate and function. And I saw people coming in. I saw intercessors coming in and they were starting to see in the spirit for what God is doing on the global stage. At passing the mantle, what God is trying to do is get you out of your little world, get you out of your little environment, get you out of your little problems that you think are so significant and get up into another dimension and start praying about the harvest and a praying about things happening all around the world because folks if we can stop weather we can change elections if we can stop weather then we can change economy if we can stop the only way we lose is by default by not getting in the gap God wants us to step into new territory, pray in different ways that we've never prayed before, claim things that we've never prayed before. And when you start praying internationally, and then you start praying nationally, suddenly you feel so much stronger when it comes to, well, we can take Kansas City. Of course we can. Of course I can take Des Moines or tell me your city. Just yell it out at me. Yeah, Of course I can take it. But we've got to do something, folks. We've got to be mobilized. The enemy is trying to make us feel like that we have no power and no authority, and it's only in a spiritual spiritual vacuum. No, 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 no. This thing affects everywhere. It affects everything. He said, I'm taking you back to Eden. I'm taking you back to the original assignment. He is our last man, Adam. <laughs> sit, down, sit down for two more minutes. I don't know. When are we supposed to end today? When Hillary was running, I was very perplexed. I said, God, I know the machinery. I know how it works. I know, I, I know that there's so much money. A woman being nominated, Clintons, the influence that they have, the media that supports them. I was up in the night praying. I, I said, God, I know it's gonna, it's gonna switch. As soon as she gets in office, it will be revenge politics. She's gonna go wholeheartedly against the churches. I know that. I had a friend that was, um, I actually won his brother to the Lord and I was trying to win him. He's a super uber um, uh, millionaire guy and he had been with the Clintons uh, up in Chappaquiddick and had Christmas dinner with Al Gore and I mean, the whole deal. Uh, Hillary came to his airplane hangar and he did a, a campaign uh, promotion for her and all this stuff. So he looked at me one day and said, we're coming for you. We're coming for you. We're going to take away your 501Cs. We're coming for your churches. We're coming for you. And I knew God just squeezed him because he didn't normally do that with me. I knew God just squeezed him to let me hear what was really going on behind the scenes. But I was praying. And I said, it was 2 in the morning. I said, God. <sighs> Can we stop her? Should I even be praying about this? And he said, just like that, you can stop her. I went, 
oh, oh, oh God. We can do something about this. We, we can. He said, you can stop for us. Okay, so all right, all right, all right. I'm, I'm, no, I'm, I'm all in. Let's do this. Let's do this, God. I was on a trip to Brazil. I was in, uh, I think it was in Rio this time. And at the end of the conference, man, the Holy Spirit, we had been in praying for days together. Start at 7, they go to midnight. It's just, that's Brazil for you. And it was at the end of the night, God took me up in the Spirit. I began to speak it in the name of Jesus. I'm not against a person. I'm against the spirits behind the people. And I felt it change. I was like, wow. I stopped. She didn't get in. Now I'm praying in 2024. God, where are we now? How should we be praying right now? What should we be doing now? And I'm asking the church because the Lord said to me, when he told me about persecution in America, he said, I'm going to give America a space of grace. And there will be one last conservative president. And he said, how long that space of grace lasts deter is determined by how fervent the church prays. How serious do we take our role in the earth as the people of God? All right, lift your hands to the Lord. Let's pray together. Father, in the name of Jesus, whatsoever is bound on earth is bound in heaven. Whatever is loosed on earth is loosed in heaven. We have moved from Jezebel to fighting Athaliah. And now, Lord, Athaliah must be dealt with. We have to shut it down, Lord, in the name of Jesus. We have to operate for the sake of our land. For the sake of this nation, we must possess the land. Whoso puts his trust in the Lord shall possess the land. If my people will humble themselves and pray and turn from their wicked ways, I will hear from heaven. I will forgive their sins and I will heal their land. This Antichrist spirit this Antichrist spirit that is trying to take over this nation, we restrain it right now in the name of Jesus. We hold it back in the name of Jesus. God, we send the angels of the Lord to take out the dragons. God, we take out the dragons in the name of Jesus. Oh, oh. Would you stand to your feet right now? Stand to your feet right now. We've got to take some territory in the Holy Ghost today. It's time to take back everything the enemy has stolen from us. And then it's time to advance. This is not a time to go backwards. This is a time to go forwards. This is not a time for America to be taken over. We have one more push. We have one more big push. We have one more big outpouring of the Holy Ghost. There is a visitation. There's an 11th hour visitation. We're going to hold back the horses of the apocalypse. We're going to hold back the Antichrist system. We're going to stop Baphomet and Baal. The church is going to rise up and we're going to use our kingdom authority today. Come on, Gideon. Come on, Gideon. Come on, Esther. Come on, Deborah. Come on, church. I want you to let something come out of your, out of your very being that says, I know who I am. I have dominion. I have authority. We have power from the Holy Ghost today, and we can bind, and we can stop it. We can shut it down in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, we pray right now against the LGBTQ plus agenda. We pray, oh God, in the name of Jesus, 
against the spirit of perversion. We take authority right now and we pray God for a Holy Ghost outpouring in this nation. We pray for a Holy Ghost outpouring in this nation. We are praying for revival in America. We are praying for revival in America. We got to put on the armor. We got to put on the armor of God. And we've got to operate in the rhema word. What is the rhema word? What is God telling us? We pray against the spirit of deception right now, for it would deceive the very elect if it were possible. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Clap your hands to the Lord and give him praise right now. Thank you, Jesus. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, America has three assignments from God. God raised up America. God raised up America. He has three assignments. Its first assignment is to spread the gospel around the world. 80% of the world's missionaries and 80% of the world's Bibles come out of America. The, the, the gospel is financed by the prosperity of America. That's number one. Number two is to protect Israel. The nations of the world cannot gather around Jerusalem and fulfill the, the picture of the Battle of Armageddon as long as America is a, is, a, is a strong ally and has its superpower status for Israel. So the whole BRICS alliance that they're making right now, B-R-I-C-S, is to destroy the West and to take down America. That, is, that just happened in Russia this last week. They're trying to change the currency, the U.S. currency, where they trade in BRICS dollars rather than U.S. dollars, and that could cripple our economy. Number three reason, but that's all to take America out so that Israel will be unprotected. There is a rabid spirit of anti-Semitism that's flowing through America right now. This is part of that global agenda. I'm not saying Israel's perfect, because they're not. But <laughs> America isn't either. But this is still our assignment. And number three, God has given us a powerful army to hold back the Antichrist system. As long as America is independent and for democracy, it stops there from being a global, a global one world government. So we are gonna pray for America right now because in just a few days, the direction of America is gonna be decided. We're gonna go back to these covenants that have been made where they put the, the, the cross in the ground at Cape Henry and dedicated America to preaching the gospel. Let's lift our hands, let's lift our voice, and let's pray one more time in the name of Jesus. Instead of just talking about being in the kingdom, Father, we're gonna operate in it right now. We're gonna function in it right now. We're taken from the rich ground of our dominion. 
We're taking, we're taking our hands in the rich ground of Adama. We're reaching our hand in the soil of who we are. We're reaching deep into what you said is ours. I pray that America remain true to its destiny, would remain true to its assignment. It would remain true, oh God, to your ultimate desire. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Just can fit the enemy. God send confusion into the camp of the enemy. Oh God, I pray in the name of Jesus, destroy every strategy. Oh God, take out, oh God, take out every action of Haman. Reverse, oh God, all the things that have been put in motion right now. In the name of Jesus, reverse the enemy's weapons. Reverse his strategies. Reverse his tools back against himself. In the name of Jesus, we come into the throne room. And if it please the king, if it please the king, if it please the king, let us find favor. For we are not asking, Lord Jesus, about servitude. We're asking about our very life. We're asking about our very future. We're asking about the church and its existence. Oh God, we pray in the name of Jesus, you raise up and you bring down. You are God in the heavens. He that sitteth in the heavens shall laugh. The Lord shall have them in, in derision. Put them into chaos. Put them into derision. Hallelujah. All right, clap your hands to the Lord and give him praise right now. Now, I'm going to prophesy about Kansas City and about this church. And then I'll give you back the mic. So I was studying about eating. I don't even have time to break all that down today. But the Bible says it had four rivers that flowed out of the garden. So how do you have four rivers flow from one river? How does that happen? And they went in different directions. And I realized for the first time. It didn't flow north, south, east, or west. It flowed up. He said it came to a head. It was a fountain head. It was the head came out and spread. Many years ago, I say three years ago, seems like a long time ago, but about three years ago, I was up in the mountains. And the Lord said, if man would not have fallen, what was my plan for him in the garden? I never thought about it. The plan was, is that there were more people, but they would just keep expanding the garden. He gave him a promise of the seas, but he put him in a garden that had rivers. Because he fully intended him to extend the garden from the river all the way to the sea. You got it? So I was praying after the broadcast went off, I was asking God about the Garden of Eden. I just couldn't get off the study to talk to him about it for two hours. And that's where he showed me the, there was a fountain that came up. The fountain. The source. The fountainhead. 
was talking to Bobby Wade about his thing about the fountain. And I realize Eden now is a spiritual place, not a physical place. And something that is established. And so God has given this church its own fountainhead. Hallelujah. Passing the mantle is about unlocking the fountainhead. Now watch this. The word Eden, you know what it means? It means pleasure. It means delight. Dainty, finery, abundance. God put that man in the pleasure of the presence of God. And his dominion was first set, not in a wilderness. It was set in a place of abundance. God does not want our dominion in our minds. He doesn't want our default to think that dominion equals a wilderness or a desert. He wants you to step into a place where there are no deficits at all. That's what the fountainhead is releasing, the superabundance of the presence of God where there is no lack. So we can extend the reach in every direction. Everywhere the river flows, we just keep extending out the kingdom. Everywhere the river flows, north and south and east and west. Are you ready right now? Are you ready? Lift your hands all across this building. Father, right now, I release the fountainhead of the Spirit, that there would be no deficits left. When we leave this meeting, God, we will be in the glory of your presence. We will be, oh God, in the overflow of who you are. We'll be in the superabundance, oh God, of heaven on earth. Aloma Shakai, a spiritual place. God, change our default from deficits, oh God, to overflow. From barely getting by, oh God, to more than enough. Bring us into that place of rest, oh God, where we delight, oh God, and we expand your kingdom. In Jesus' name. I love you, Life Church.